In this session, we're going to create a complete game in just a few minutes. Here is the plan. Our game is a story about a hero who has to try to collect a gold coin, avoiding zombies on the way. Our goal is a complete game with keyboard control of the main character and game winning and losing ending conditions. We're going to have five agents in the end, although four of them are just part of the basic game. We'll have a hero, we'll have the zombie, the gold coin, and a floor on which all the agents will move and rest. So let's get started. I've already launched the Agent Cubes application and created a new project by clicking on the Create Project button. That creates a folder on the desktop, which you can see right here, when we've called it Maze Craze. This is what the window looks like when you first create a project. Let's get started making our agents. First, we'll create the floor. I'll call it Floor. And we'll use a simple tile from the tiling group. There's the concrete triangle, which is a nice pattern. You can see the agent now appears in the agent list. Next, we'll create the hero from an inflatable icon group, people. We'll talk more about inflatable icons later. We'll choose the player icon. And I can move it around to show you it's truly 3D. Next, we'll create the zombie also from the inflatable icon people group we'll choose Billy Billy does tend to look a little bit like a zombie and finally we'll create the gold coin also an inflatable icon from the miscellaneous group and it's the coin so now we've created all of the basic characters in our game now it's time to create the world we do that by clicking on the plus world button, giving it a name. We'll call it level one in case we have more than one level. We'll take the default of nine by 16, total of 144 cells. And when I click OK, you'll see a two dimensional representation of the world. We'll talk more about three dimensions later. Let's populate the world. First, we'll put the floor down. I'm going to click on the floor agent and choose the multi-agent tool or rectangle or array tool. Clicking on the upper left cell, dragging it to the lower right, I've created a layer of floor. It's a good idea to save early and save often when you're modifying the world or the game board. I'll click on the Save button and we can see that if, if I move it around, and there's some tools for doing that, and I click on the Reset button, it restores it to the last time I've saved. Next, let's place our hero and coin and zombies on the board. I'll use the single agent or pencil tool to do that. I'll put the hero near the bottom. I'll put the coin near the top. And I'll put a few zombies guarding the coin. And I'll save it. And then we'll click play. And we see that nothing happens. The reason is that we haven't created the actions, the behavior for these agents to perform. So let me click stop and we'll begin the behavior. Let's begin by programming the behavior of the zombie. We can choose the agent whose behavior we wish to program by clicking on the behavior on the agent in the world with the arrow tool or in the action list. So if I click on any of the zombies in the world we see that the zombie behavior comes up here. Agent Cube's behavior consists of rules. The rules work like this. If a set of conditions is true, then a set of actions will be performed. If there's more than one rule, then Agent Cubes will evaluate the rules in order from top to bottom and execute or perform the first rule that has all of its conditions satisfied. So what we want is for the zombie to move around randomly, we'll grab the move random on action from the actions palette on the floor. And if I click play, you'll see that the zombies are moving around probably too fast for us to be able to manage this game. I could slow it down with the slider bar. The problem with that is it slows down the entire simulation, all agents. And we would just like the zombies to be moving around at a fixed speed. So let me click stop, move the slider bar back over. And I will add a condition to this rule which says that once every half a second, I would like the zombies to move around randomly on the floor. So let me click Reset, 
and play. And we can see now the zombies are moving around at a little bit more manageable pace. Okay, let's program the behavior of the hero. I'll click on hero in the agent list. And we want the hero to respond to the keyboard. There's a key condition, which I'll move into the if side of the first rule. Click on the key A and change it to be the up arrow. We would like the hero to move up, so I'll grab the move action and change it to be pointing up. And let me just reset the world here and click play, and we can see that the, age, the hero can move up. Can't move in any other directions because we haven't programmed the behavior for the other arrow keys. We could, using the plus rule button, add another rule and move conditions and actions into it. Or we could duplicate this rule because the structure of the other three rules is the same as this one. And so we will duplicate it three times. Let me move the slider bar to see that there are, in fact, three additional rules. I'll just click on each one and change the arrows to point in the directions of the other three keys. And then we'll have a complete set of key control in the behavior. Let's click play. And we can see now that the hero can move in all four directions. So we have a complete behavior of the movement controlled. But what we haven't done is provide rules to handle the game ending conditions, winning and losing. When it comes to game ending uh, rules, they could be placed in a number of different agents. We could put, for example, the game ending condition in the coin that says, if the hero is next to me, I'll declare the game over. Similarly, we could put the game ending condition in the zombie that says, if the hero is next to me, then I will declare the game over and lost. However, if we did that latter, we would have the possibility of two zombies, if they were next to each other, declaring the game over, which would result in two sets of game-ending actions being performed. So in this case, a better place to put the game-ending condition is actually in the hero. So let me click on hero. It's a good idea to have the more exceptional rules, the things that don't happen very often, first. So I will click on the first rule and say plus rule, and we'll see that a blank rule now appears below the rule that I had originally selected. I'll move this new rule up to the top. And what we'll say is, if I get next to a coin, and we could say next to equals one coin, but there may be more than one coin next to it. And to be more general, we're going to say if I'm next to at least one coin, which means greater than or equal to one coin, then I want to do three things. First, I want to play a sound. We'll play a congratulatory sound. We'll choose one of my favorites, the hallelujah sound. Next, we'll display a message from the dialog group, the show message action. It says make it so as a default. We'll change that to you win. And if we look at a little triangle right here in the action itself and click on it, we'll see there's a secondary message. The default is the spaceship is ready to go. We'll change that to be click OK to play again. And that will allow the user to play the game again. And finally, it may not be obvious, but if we were next to the coin and winning, we'd get the sound played and the message displayed. And once we clicked OK, the simulation would still be running. But the problem is we'd be next to the coin, in which case we'd get the sound and the message. And every time we clicked OK, we would get the sound and the message again in what programmers affectionately call an infinite loop. To prevent that, we need to either stop the simulation or reload the world, which resets all the agents back in their initial positions far apart from each other in this case. I'll choose that. And now we've got a complete set of actions to control winning the game. Let's go ahead and play it. I'll move right up to the world, or the coin. Hear the sound. And we can see that the simulation is continuing to run. Let me hit stop and reset. We want the same kind of rule for ending the game with a loss. So I'm going to click on this rule and duplicate it and choose the second one of them. And say if I'm next to at least one zombie, and I definitely could be near more than one zombie, I'm going to play a different sound. We'll choose the explode sound. And I'll have a slightly different message. The secondary message is fine, but the first one will just change to be you lose. And click OK, click play, and I'll move up and find a zombie. And once again, we see the game ending condition is handled. Let me click stop. So we now have a complete game 
winning, losing, all the right movements. Now it's time to talk about a few more advanced features. Early on, we tilted the world just to see the fact that it is tiltable. We can make it permanently tilted. There are three controls. There's the rotation, which lets me rotate in a number of different directions. There's the translation, which lets me move it up and down and right and left. And then there's the zoom feature, which lets me zoom in and out. And now I'm going to save the world in this perspective. You can see a little bit more 3D view of the hero. So when I click reset, it stays in this position. If I accidentally move too fast in rotating, I can flip the world completely upside down. So one thing that's useful to do is to put a little bit more of a background. We call it a sky dome. I click on the world menu and click add sky dome and then click on say the sky and clouds, and say open. I now have a world that has actually you can see some clouds in it. And this will be more useful when we get into uh, 3D mode. If I fail to save it after I've done this, I, I put it back in this view, but if I say reset, it's gone. So I do need to save the world whenever I make a change to it. So I'm going to add that sky dome back again, and now I will save it. And now when I hit reset, it's back. We can also add a little bit more challenge to the game. Let's create the wall agent. I'll click on agent, type in wall click on the cube and the brick and we will choose the cracked alternating pattern and now we'll use the multi agent tool to create a little bit more of a challenge for our agent to move around and get to the gold and let me save it now if I try to move I have to oh I can move on top of it well that's a problem that's cheating we need to fix that so we have to add another set of conditions to the rules to prevent the hero from moving anywhere but on the floor. So let me click on the hero and all we need to do is say I can move up if I see that in the up direction there's a floor and I can copy that condition into each of the other ones simply changing the direction to match the key and now I've got a control that adequately keeps the hero only on the, the floor. And notice I don't have to do any special saving. Whenever I modify behavior or later on when we get to modifying the shapes, as soon as I click OK or finish making the changes, it's automatically saved to the hard drive. Only when we change the world do we need to worry about saving it. Let me click play. I'll try to move up. And you can see I cannot move up onto the bricks. I cannot move left or right or down. Playing the game with this size window is not as interesting as playing it in full screen, which we can easily do by clicking on this button. And now the entire window is filled with the game board. Pressing the escape button lets us ex exit from that mode. Another thing we can do is play the game in what's called first person mode. If I click on an agent and then click on the camera icon, which is right here, the first time I do that, I have to reorient the agent using the world manipulation tools. So I need to turn the agent to face the way I would like it to face it, translate it to be just maybe the camera to be just above the head of the agent, and then um, I will go back to the our bird's eye view mode and save it. I could save it in first person mode, but I kind of like to have it come up in bird's eye view mode. When I click first person again, you'll see now the camera position is. As, as I wish. Let's play the game. You'll see that I can do the movement. I can move over here and move up. Problem is when I go to the left or right I don't turn. So if there's an agent behind me, a zombie sneaking up on me, I can't see the agent. And When I move I can finally win. But it's kinda lucky. In order to do first person we're going to have to do some additional programming. That's the subject of another lesson. <coughs>